Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of uh, <laughs> uh, Dark Souls 3 Lore Through. Um, so yeah, we uh, finished Arch Dragon Peak last time and we're going to be doing um, the DLC now. Uh, I've also changed my build. I'm just going with a 50 strength, 40 vigor, 40 endurance, no dex, no nothing else, and I am just using a plus 10 butcher knife and just the herald set. Uh, knight's ring to get a little bit extra there, and then I was farming. So let's see, what do I want? Um, here. Dam damage absorption. I should probably have considered this. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess I could do uh, steel protection. I can just go with that. Anyway, so we <clears throat> previously went to um, the uh, the painted world of Ariando in the snowfield. So let's just head back there, and we can uh, see what's going on. The one thing I wanted to talk about <clears throat> was that we kind of found this area from... Um, we were at the... Uh, the Cathedral of the Deep, and there was the statue that was placed in front of another statue. It's a statue of a woman, and then in front of it was a statue of kind of the deacons. And there was a guy that was wearing, a, you know, a kind of a unique armor set, and he was talking about how people have gone into the painting, and that there's one ash, and that we smell like ash, and we will be the second ash that has gone into the painting. Uh, we'll learn much more about that guy, <clears throat> but uh, for now, uh, suffice it to say that that was the guy. He disappeared after that, and now we can um, um, deal with him in the lore and stuff. Uh, we got the item here, but let's talk to this guy. Ah. 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 Have you just arrived? How very unusual. Just how long has it been? Rejoice, my new friend, for this is a true haven of the forlorn, the cold and gentle painted world of Ariandel. Quick, go along. Find one for yourself. A sweetly rotting bed to lie upon. So, I mean, if we hadn't learned until now, uh, even though we, you know, we did press a little bit of canvas that the the guy had. Um, this is establishing that this is the painted world of Ariandel, not Ariamis, but Ariandel. And this looks like a Corvian. He also said it's the location of the Forlorn, which is, I guess, like a word that kind of came about in Dark Souls 2, Scholar of the First Sin. Um, but I don't really know too much about that, because I, uh, I mean, we played through Scholar of the First Sin, but it was unique to that. Um, but I guess this is what you would call the people from Ariamis as well. Um, and he also says that uh, you should find a bed of rot to lie in. Um, he looks Corvian, and uh, and we'll see this rot a lot around the world, and I think and that's important. Ah, ah, yes, of course. You're no exception. We've all seen terrible things. But you're safe now. Let it ease your burden. Ariandel will make a fine home for you. So, go on ahead. Find one for yourself. A sweetly rotting bed to lie upon. Different NPCs have different interpretations and reactions to what's happening to this world. Quick, a sweet... So, he's just saying, find a rotting bed and just enjoy yourself. I don't know if that's something I would enjoy, but <clears throat> point well taken. So we can see this tree here that's on fire, and it looks like a woman with hair. Um, 
might be a theme of the area. And then there's these guys, which have a very distinctive look to them. They look like a mixture between Faramware and the Abyss Watchers. We can see another bed of rot here. Uh, just barely. And with these flies. But yeah, the trick of this area is to not get overwhelmed uh, with people, which is quite easy to do. Especially with these guys with the shields. And these guys throw spears, which is a whole new enemy, or a new weapon type. And of course, the people that spit these fires. But we got the follower boots. There's another one of those trees. We got the follower boots so we can kind of learn about these people. Boots worn by the Farron followers. When, the, when a warrior of Farron fell to the abyss, the tall, lean followers <clears throat> with their hollowed eyes quietly appeared in groups to hunt them down. Farron and its watchers fell to ruin, but the followers survived as a wandering pack of hollows. So it sounds like, uh, yeah, just in general, like there was a kind of sister group to the Farron Abyss Watchers, and they were the followers of them, and when something bad happened to those guys, they uh, would um, take care of them if they fell to the Abyss or whatever, and for some reason they've ended up here in the painting, so... So there's a lot of dynamic level changing in this uh, level. Um, and they uh, make platforms fall and, and things like that, so... So there's these wolves... <sighs> I just struck a second too early. And now, because the hair is moving, we can see that these are, trees are enemies. So yeah, I hit that wolf and he howled, which means that he alerted every wolf in the area of my presence. Ugh. And they are the dogs in this game. <clears throat> they are just amazingly annoying. They circle around you, I lose all my stamina. They like wait for you. I mean, it's just insane. I don't know of a good way to fight them. Just because I'm, I'm a noob. I just heard some more wolves howling. Oh, is this real? Okay, totally didn't even see that. I don't know how they have gotten into positions that I just cannot hit them. <laughs> but it's good to kind of take them all out in one area because... Or, you know, if you could do it one by one, that'd be great, but... We'll see plenty of these trees, so I'm not worried about seeing their attacks. We will see them, unfortunately. And to make matters worse, at the top of this hill are... Like a group of these guys, which is the most annoying thing to fight. But, you know. Sometimes you get lucky. So you get the follower Javelin. Light spear wielded by the Farron followers balanced to allow for throwing. The followers attacking groups surrounding foes, shielding themselves and thrusting their spears at their foes. On a final command, they hurl their spears at the fallen foe to give the retired warrior an audible send-off. 
<clears throat> and obviously the weapon art is hurling the spear. Makes sense. The wolves treat you much the same. They circle around you and attack in groups and take their time and all this stuff. Um, it's very calculated and very the most intelligent of the game. Uh, and we can see up here a proper almost Sif like wolf. Who is, you know, not too hard, but certainly no slouch either. That's the move that you don't want to get hit by. Well, that one too, but. Nice. And there's just a few more wolves here that we're going to take care of. I feel like they just pack this area. that should be it. We're going to try to go along this path here. We can see up here there's um, kind of a new enemy surrounded by wolves here. We'll see if we can get over into that area. Um, this area is like optional or whatever but uh, I guess we got to do it to be completionist. And uh, it contains some of these guys. They're a little bit tough. Um, and a guy that shoots at you from above, so you really have to have location figured out. Too bad. Am I Ember? No, I am not. I am also a uh, Finger of Rosaria and should probably be a warrior. Not that it affects any of this gameplay, but. So I think I'm gonna try and run into the this uh, tower right up above here. The reason I'm taking precaution is just because <clears throat> there's a guy that shoots right there with arrows that then explode after they hit, which is cool, but I gotta be careful. See if I can get away with this. Okay. Okay. I don't think they can climb. Okay. Crystal lizard that I don't need. But there's a few items we should grab. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, he died. Glad that not all of these people uh, attack you. Ethereal Oak Shield. Um, I'm gonna wait. I guess we can try and do this here. Nope. Yeah, like two guys are just standing there. All right. So let's go back up here. Let's go up. I mean, is this a guy? Just waiting for a surprise where I walk up here and like five guys follow me up here. Okay. Hmm. What's the way to get that? Okay, we can go up there. I think there's someone up on the top here. There's some ashes for sure. Okay. Well, maybe this is how we find it. Get that item. Captain's ashes. Here, let's read both what we got. Humble ash of the captain of the Millwood Knights. With this, the Shrine Handmaiden will prepare new items. Long ago, when the Millwood Knights lost the forest they called home, they began a journey so long that even thoughts of their sworn enemy washed away, replaced by a vision of a cold and brittle wood. Um, the only other woods we kind of know about are um, the woods where like, the hunters were, where Sif and stuff was, which seems thematic for the area. Char bronze shield used by the Millwood Knights that slowly regenerates HP. This shield appears to be blessed by a great, if faded, image of an ethereal oak. Okay. Let's see if we can do this. Okay. Millwood battle axe. And healing, apparently. Battle axe wielded by the Millwood Knights. Its blade is blessed by the symbol of the ethereal oak. A hefty axe normally wielded by the mightiest of warriors. Oh, it has a specific war cry uh, description. The unique war cry of the Millwood Knights entailed a leap straight f toward the enemy and a fearsome roar. All right, so my question is, how do we like get by these guys? Is there any items I can drop down? And grab here. Is there any item on this thing? I guess we're gonna try and drop off here. See if we can do it surreptitiously. Okay. Oh, there's something here. Okay. I'm just gonna do a quick run around here because I don't know that there's anything amazing over here. Oh, great. Well, there goes an ember. I feel like uh, I'll get to this area up here <laughs> where I gotta fight this guy and then I'm gonna get invaded upon.
is this that I'm trying to go? Here. I guess I don't have to fight these guys either. Um, so I'm gonna just pass through real quick. Okay. Hopefully they don't follow me. Okay, I'm gonna get a large soul. So let's go light the bonfire here so that if we get invaded we can at least uh, be good to Huh There's a thing there um, We can't rest at that can we? Alright, so he might have gone down towards the Corvian settlement if he was over here, or she. But let's head up here to grab a few items. Not that I want to. <laughs> okay. Firebomb. Okay, we have a huge rod up here. And we get frozen weapon. These guys just expel frost. I think we're good. From oh, there's a, I mean, there's just an item up here. We don't like a. I think it's a large titanite shard. I love how these wolves like go back. They don't like attack you right away. We can. Uh, oh, nice. He just jumped off probably. But yeah, these guys can send the flames at you. And uh, and the frostbite. Those are basically those guys' moves. Oh, and they can like grab you and stuff like that. So looks like this guy was attacked by the frost or something as he died. And yeah, now we can uh, focus on this area right now. Perfect. That is my least favorite part of the DLC. The rest is pretty nice. Okay, yeah, so he uh, broke the bridge, which actually doesn't fit what we want to do. So we're gonna we're gonna reload so it goes back. But you'll notice at this point that with the bridge intact, that this now starts to have a faint evocation of... Are you kidding me? I have to die? Um, well, then we're going to die because I want to do this first. Um... But yeah, let's see how far we can get down, what we can see here. Some more trees. <clears throat> um. All right, now with the bridge up, it looks very similar to the beginning of the painting of Ariamis now, except that we couldn't go back in the other one, but it kind of looked like it could have been here. And 
And when we cross the bridge here and we see all the Corvians praying. I am going to actually knock this down now. Mash those. This uh, fence is completely busted up. And uh, there's a new character standing in front of this. Now, this is the point which it starts to diverge from. We got a hollow gem before, right? Yeah, we got a bunch. Um, <clears throat> this is the point where it starts to diverge from the Ariamis, because this, you know, is a little different at this point. But let's talk to this guy and see what he's got to say. Well, well. Your Lady Yuri is Lord of Hollows. I uh, am. Yeah. No bell tolls. And yet, you've slipped into the painting. Hmm. Oh, no matter. If you've lost your way, the words of Lady Frida will guide you. Now, go on inside, show respect, and listen carefully. Okay, so he said, no bell has tolled, told, and yet you have come here. We know what tolling means in our... What is that noise? We know what bell tolling means in our world. Uh, the rise of the unkindled ash in order to do something with the fire. And it sim seems like it's similar for this world, too, um, that there is a bell... Um, however, I think we'll find the bell and we'll see the state of it. Did I get, like, invaded and I don't know and some guy's doing something weird? Uh, but he also says, go talk to Sister Frida and she'll explain everything to you. What's keeping you? Go on. Right inside. Show respect. And let Lady Frida speak to you. I love that voice actor. He's got such a guttural low voice all right so I see a door here what is going on with the sounds Maybe uh, an enemy got stuck on something weird or something, because there's a lot of things breaking up um, that I don't recall. If you know what that noise is, if it's something specific, let me know in the comments. Um, so yeah, I guess uh, <laughs> I jumped up here a little prematurely. Um, I was going to say what we can kind of assess of the situation that there is some sort of painter here who seems to be obsessed with painting this uh, lady. And I love these, like right over here, where the face is kind of like scratched out and, and blurry and stuff. And then these nice ones. So there's all these paintings. And then we have this um, statue here, which is uh, similar to the one in the painting of Ariamis which we had to spin around in order to gain access. Um, but yeah, clearly some painter, maybe Frida is a painter. We can kind of come up here and see that our suspicions are in fact correct. There's some empty frames, some canvases. There's a new painting being made, which just on its own looks actually pretty dope, like with all the texture. Like I'd be interested to know who like painted that essentially. Is that just one of the developers? It's so cool. And then we have the, um, you know, the paints and such like that. And um, yeah, so maybe Frida is a painter in her off time. Let's talk to her and see what she has to say about everything.
Welcome to the painted world of Ariandel. I am Frida. I have long stood beside our blessed father and the rest of the forlorn. But forlorn thou seemest not, Lord of Hollows. I know not the missteps which led thee to this painted world, but thy duty is all, and thy duty lieth elsewhere. Return from whence thou camest. I presume it visible to thee? The bonfire here in this room. A meek and faded thing, but twill guide thee nonetheless. So she does not want us here at all. <laughs> She's like, cease your ingress and get the f fuck out of here. Ah, yes. There is a thing thou shouldst by rights possess. A remembrance of this cold world for the great Lord of Londor. May it help thee bear thy duty. It's interesting they all know I'm the Lord of Londor. <laughs> now, return from whence thou camest. Thou'st a place in that world, and that alone is cause to rejoice. I have no place in this world, in other words. Uh, one of the bite rings native to Kareem. This ring would never grace Frida's hand for the painting and its frost became her home. Um, yeah, so we'll be back. And I guess maybe we'll find out what that crashing sound is. These Corvians don't attack you. We'll see if we're uh, any luck, have any luck with this area. Um, I don't like, you know, these kind of like puzzles where you have to fall down. Um, there is a uh, item that I will be skipping, I think. I think it's the bow that is used to fire those arrows that explode. But I'm just going to use this as an opportunity to just get through this area as quick as possible so that I don't make I don't have any issues so I have some javelin throwers uh... yeah I died so we have enough though we can do that <coughs> oh, there we go so we have this guy shooting at us, um, so I just want to get through this area quickly. You know, we can search all these branches and get the bow and stuff, but I'm just going to try to get through this part and not die. Ooh, he usually doesn't fall down. Hopefully I can uh, light this bonfire. You've been rest at it. Perfect. <clears throat> Alright, so this paint, uh, this uh, bonfire is called The Depth of the Painting. And uh, we can see a crab there. We'll explore that area in a second. Um, but for now, there's actually a boss over here. Kind of a neat little area. We have all these flowers down here. We have the frozen wood, kind of like the chaos. We have this coliseum type thing. And underneath we have the boss. Who we're just gonna try to I guess we'll kill the the wolves first. Okay, let's see if we can uh, actually heal. Alright, now let's take this guy out.
<laughs> or die immediately. Yeah, he can uh, get stunned really easily, which I should take advantage of and actually... Yeah, and that's where he calls his buddy, which I didn't want to have happen. Hopefully I can kill him before... There we go, okay. So then he calls his wolf, which we've already fought one of these guys, so... I just have to keep up with his moves here. Second phase. Comes red eyed. Ooh, that frost bites you real quick. Not a problem. So the Grave Tender and his dog, we get the Champion's Bones and the Valor Heart. And we can also see in here a grave similar to that of Artorius, as, again, per usual. <laughs> uh, well, it's a slightly different sword, so I don't know exactly what it means. So we get the Champion's Bones. Burn at Firelink to unlock undead matches. The charred but warm bones of a champion. Burn at the Firelink Shrine bonfire to participate in undead matches. Long ago, an undead declared a fight. A fight to celebrate their undeath and to preserve what remained of their souls. So it was that the undead matches were born. The merit of an undead is measured for in depths. In deaths, could there be a greater gift for such a creature than a fight that has no end? Oh, and we didn't read Frozen Weapon. One of the spells left behind by the young sorcerer Sullivan before leaving the painted world. Huh. So Sullivan was in the painted world, and he had a Frozen Weapon uh, uh, magic. Sullivan was born and raised inside the painting, yet had little use for his frigid homeland since he had not yet experienced loss. So it was almost like he wasn't a forlorn and he didn't belong here, so it was only makes sense for him to leave. Weapon once wielded by the champion of the undead match, a special paired set consisting of a broadsword and a lion shield. The champion fought on without rest until he lost his mind. In the end, only his page and a lone wolf stayed at his side. So, yeah, there's not a ton of stuff with that, but that's that. All right, so let us go back to that one. We've already lit like a million bonfires in this, which is kind of funny. Um, so let's go back to the depths and let's explore this area over here. Now I'm not going to kill these crabs. Um, they uh, they only get, yield you a crystal uh, gem if you kill both of them. Because you see one, you're like, oh, that's fine. And then you realize that there's two. That emerge. I think it's infinite, actually, incidentally. Um, so, if you kill the two, you'll get a gem, but, like, they'll keep spawning, and, I don't know, it's terrible. Okay. Oh, 
Oh wow. That should have killed me. That is, is that the uh, Star Great Sword? Oh no, it's got fire. Is it maybe the? Thank you. Alright, so now there's a crazy... And then we get Snap Freeze. One of the spells left behind by the young sorcerer Solomon. Yeah. So it's interesting that Solomon was born here. I don't know if that's like. And also, after you kill that, then it reveals this ladder. That previously wasn't there. Um, I don't know if there's a lot to be gained about the knowledge that Solomon was here, um, except that it might motivate his character. long ladders so we're gonna just talk here um, because I mean I guess it just gives some indication of his character about what he wanted um, although he seemed very controlling um, you know capturing Aldrich and locking well I don't know if he captured him but it certainly seems like he like made Aldrich like do stuff and he started feeding him gods for his own benefit um, you know and it, based on the information that we get, I mean, maybe I'll jump a, a little bit ahead here, but I don't think that, um, um, I think he left before Frida got here, for example. So I don't think he has anything to do with that. And, um, so, uh, I guess... The only thing to think about is that he wasn't forlorn, and he needed to leave. And that he used to be a powerful sorcerer before he found the profane flame. And then he kind of... makes another Titanite slap. Where he kind of combined his efforts. And became a sorcerer who also yielded, or wielded the uh, flame. I don't know. Um, and we can go back up. In fact, I'm going to. I'm going to rest at this bonfire. And we're getting close to the end here. We're just going to get run to the next bonfire, essentially, and then we can uh, call it an episode. And I was thinking that we would take <coughs> potentially three episodes for this, but I think we'll be good with two. Pretty sure. We'll see. Uh, maybe three, because there's, we have to read a bunch of stuff after we finish it. Okay. We should still get that.
We have the slide down thing, just like Isolith. So yeah, we can kind of see that Colosseum thing a little bit better there. So we can kind of see that there's all these Corvians here that are like basically dead. Got a budding green blossom. Um, actually, there's also these things we found in Irithyll, which I suppose indicates that uh, Sullivan probably brought them back from here. That they originated from here. But yeah, there's all these Corvians that are like here. They're not causing a big. They're not hard to beat. They're on their last legs. They can do some damage, but. It's nothing really. They do more to scare you than anything else, like this one. <sighs> you know, there's like a river of blood, there's a lot of rot around here. And this kind of silly enemy. So yeah, this game is about positioning, as I said earlier, like, if you can just get in the right position, then you don't have an issue with this guy. If you're in his path, like, it's over. <laughs> this guy is just brutal, especially with the bleed. Looks a little bit like the arena that we fought uh, Priscilla in. This Corvian deals with things very differently than the rest. Oh, well, there is nothing forlorn about you. You must be the other Ash, I suppose. There we go, another reference. We, you know, we had heard it. You'll have to go back to the actual episode um, where we went to the Cathedral of the Deep and talked to that guy that gave us the scrap of the painting that got us here. Um... But uh, he, uh, you know, he indicates that we were the second Ash, and now this guy says, "Oh, you're the other Ash, not, not the second even, like the other. Like, there's kind of meant to be two or whatever. So yes, we are Ash. We are here for the same purpose, probably. Oh, oh, finally, you have come. Oh, wondrous Ash." Grant us our wish. Make the tales true and burn this world away. My lady must see flame, and you have only to show her. You are ash, are you not? Is it not fire that you seek? Yeah, so he probably asked the same thing of the first ash that came through here. And, uh, 
so he also speaks of his lady, my sister Frida, and that <clears throat> there is kind of almost like a similar thing going on here where, you know, the world needs to be set aflame and burned to ground, which is interesting. We'll explore this more in depth later, but we'll see what else what he has to say. Surely you've seen the rot that afflicts our world. I have seen it, yes. But that which fooled the good father and buried the flame. After we had all made up our minds, too. So, please, grant us one wish. Make the tales true. And burn this world away. My lady must see flame. So, yeah, I mean, it sounds like, you know, he's talking about... Um... Sister Frida and the, and the father she referred to, she says our father, um, and uh, <clears throat> that he, she convinced him, he calls her a witch, uh, she convinced him to not to burn the world, to bury the flame and let the rot take over. Now, if I were speculating here which i won't need to do much longer eventually it's interesting that um, the people that speak to us about londor um a whole nation of hollows whose sole purpose is to usurp the fire and get rid of the whole cycle um you know are also now talking it seems about the same thing going on in this world instead of restarting the cycle with fire uh, she has convinced the father to just let the world rot, which seems to be the M.O. of Londor and what they want to do. So, again, we won't need to speculate for much longer, but that's certainly something to consider here. Oh, please. It must be you. I am so terribly frightened of timidly rotting away like the... Like those fools on the outside. He he had said in the previous one too that um, um, I can't remember. Let's talk about what he just said. I was gonna say one thing and I forgot. Um, so yeah, he refers to the fools on the outside, meaning us. Uh, probably the undead curse is what he's talking about, rotting away. Um, he can't stand the thought of doing that. As you can see, a lot of his brethren are. Oh, that's what he said. He said, we've all decided that we want the world to burn and restart. And and Sister Frida spoke against that. So it's kind of interesting. Oh, okay. All right. So, yeah, I think this whole, like, their insides are distended through their bodies or there's weird mutations and stuff like this so yeah I mean this whole thing is very uh, it's not doing well for everyone <laughs> anyway so here's the bonfire and we're gonna call it quits here for this episode in the next episode we'll kind of figure out more about this Corvian settlement and the the people involved in this story here so uh until next time see ya bye